Attention, passengers. This is your co-pilot speaking. Your pilot is black mind, so you are not going blind and there is no power failure. You are merely experiencing the immense blackness of his proximity, and when you hear his voice, you and the cabin will get even darker than you are currently. We will be cruising at the speed equal to light, because the one other thing that travels equally fast is darkness. Your loved ones awaiting your arrival may not recognize you at first sight. This is normal. Simply tell them about the pilot, and they will understand. We will taxi to the runway now, so please buckle up and prepare for a high-speed departure. Thank you for choosing Jet Black Airways, where the phrase Jet Black is also a verb. We hope you keep jetting black with us until the wings and the wheels fall off. Justice forever. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Some of y'all in peace out to the rest of you. Hit the share button because the message is more important to the messenger. Where I live today, we're getting a real serious rain. I mean, we're getting a real serious rain. It's no joke. Um, it's been raining now heavy and nonstop for an hour. I didn't think there was this much moisture in the atmosphere in a climate like this, but it's there. <laughs> no, I can't, it's, I'm shocked myself, but it's there. It's real. Anyway, with this being said, um, you're going to hear some wind noise, and there's not much I can do about that. It's not going to come onto the mic, but you're going to hear like a howling sound in the background. If the noise cancellation works, you will not hear it. Any case, um, on Buy Me a Coffee, I've uploaded something about uh, what divestors know and who told them, how they know it. You got to be on Buy Me a Coffee to find out. Uh, I'm not even putting that on the Passport Bros app, actually. Um, let me also tell you all this, though. There are going to be black women to become casualties of this gender war. That's Maybe it's lost, but it's not over. There's still shots being fired. You know, wars can end. The problem is the casualties don't stop as soon as the war ends. There are people who die from wounds that they sustained during the war, but the wounds take a while to kill them. There was an explosive ordinance device from the American Civil War that was found in some Midwestern state, I think it was, by a man in the 2000s and this century. And he was restoring the device and it detonated and killed him. He, in the 2000s, became the last casualty of the American Civil War, which ended in 1865. Wars don't stop uh, and then all of a sudden there's no more death from the war. It's more like there is no more attempts to cause deaths in this war consciously. The gender war still has its casualties. If the gender war is over, the casualties will still come about. And that's what I've had to come to understand. Deaths from wars stop long after the war supposedly stop. You have a situation now where some Deltas were in Colombia at a club and they were stepping, strutting this stuff. And in the course of that, some of us thought that they were there following brothers around and trying to ruin things. And I would have easily thought so myself, but you know what? People that were there said, no, they were just stepping, strutting this stuff. They didn't do anything to harm anybody. Their attitudes were fine. BMT, we have to admit that that title was clickbait, bro. They're casualties. They were assumed to be hostiles when they weren't. And I can somewhat understand this because, you know, I've been wrongly identified as a hostile before. 
I mean, even black Saudis identify me as untrustworthy. If they don't know me now, if they know me, it's different. But if they don't know me, they identify me as untrustworthy and I don't blame them. I had a debate yesterday with one of my most Bedouin students. He is the most Bedouin student I have. And I straight told him his culture that that Bedouin is not going to work for his education. His English is up fuck. He's not supposed to be in advance with four weeks left to go to graduation. Dude smokes a lot. He can't finish an exam without smoking because that's how often he smokes. He misses a lot of class because he's the only son in the house. And even though women are allowed to drive, his family doesn't let the women drive. So he has to drive them everywhere. And they use that to hold him back educationally. And he, yesterday in his debate, vehemently tried to convince me that he's not a racist, but that the original inhabitants of the Arabian Peninsula could not have been black. I said, how the hell is that not racist if it turns out that they were? He said, no, we come from Yemen. I asked him where the Yemenis came from. He did all the ducking and dodging and skeeting and skirting that he could do so that he would not have to say that there was even a chance of it, even a possibility. He even said that if a black Saudi citizen says to him, I'm just like you, that he, he said, no, no, we're equal, but he's not just like me. Our, our histories are different. And I, he kept interrupting. And that was the only reason I didn't get a chance to say to him, you're right, you all are not the same. He interrupts, you know, because he's Bedouin and Bedouins know everything except what they're supposed to learn. I told him that guys like him were the reason that no non-black Arab was allowed to even ask me about marrying my daughter. The discussions were over. It's not even a discussion. Don't do it. Go back and tell your family that I'm a racist. You ain't marrying my daughter. Don't even ask. And I'm going to go to my daughter and say, what the hell was that? Why did this man even feel comfortable coming to me with that? It's not morally wrong in and of itself, but you know their history. Why would you even entertain this from one of them? You think even if he's capable of seeing you as an equal, you think his family is? I said to them, if a white Westerner comes to marry, I say to, I would say to him, this is not a conversation. Don't even ask. But if one of them comes, I'll be angry he even came to ask because I already know if my son goes to ask about marrying one of their daughters, many times if they're not black, they'd say, God, no. There are families that don't care, but there are tribes that do. I'm not going to go over too much into the debate. What I'm going to say is that, um, unfortunately, innocent black women are casualties, not just of this gender war, but they're casualties of the culture, wherever they are. No one collectively prefers them over any other group of women, as far as I know. No one collectively prefers them, except black men. And unfortunately, in the diaspora and on the continent itself, we're realizing now they don't prefer brothers. We thought they did, but they don't. Much as they might even prefer the BBC below the waist over others, they still don't prefer brothers. And if they could find a way to stretch out the members of other men to the same dimensions as what they want, because I have to say is what they want because we're not, we men are actually not walking around comparing our junk sizes. Only women can really do that. <laughs> Most men are never going to know which race has the bigger Johnsons because we don't walk around doing that. It's, it's, it's something that the women have to tell us really. And so with that being said, I've got to tell you that, 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 you know, we're not going to know as much as women of the world are going to know, but nonetheless, if they can stretch other men out to the same dimensions as what they want, what they imagine about us, or what they know about us, whichever one, 
they'd be done with us completely. And one of the ways I can tell is, is in the Americas, we know that they want prison bay. They want these guys over whom they have control. I see that. I pick up on that. But that's not all. There's something else going on, too, and that is that they want. When they get with brothers, they're always looking for something to diminutize the brothers. So things they don't want in men, they're always looking at and, and seeing in men. When the men are brothers. When they're us. They don't like men that, you know, listen to women, but they don't like men that don't either. So what do they do? I know because I'm one of these guys that experience this firsthand. They'll sit up and look at exactly how much you listen to them talk and use that against you. You don't listen enough or you listen too much. Dumb stuff. The ones who don't do this, unfortunately, are also casualties, though. I'm not willing to fire shots at the innocent, knowing them to be innocent. But I am aware that this is what's going on. I am aware that well aware. I'm aware that uh, this doesn't stop. That those who have not done anything to anyone are not going to be easily identified as having no blood on their hands. And the other thing, too, is that even those Deltas that were stepping in the club and who were recorded may not be there looking to cause harm. But as long as they stay single by themselves, they won't. But the minute they try to get involved, either with men that are Colombian or men of other nationalities in Colombia, they're going to start to cause harm because they're trained for it. They still should not be approached by any of us, nor by Colombian men. They should have to do the approaching. Hey, look, soft guy area anyway, right? Drizzle, drizzle. They strong and independent. I bet you they paid for their own tickets to Colombia. But to show you one of the reasons why it is that many of them who don't have any blood on their hands, so to speak, or who have not really gone out to harm men are still going to be identified as enemies, understand that they still have certain training. And we're not going to tolerate it from them. They chase dingling as long as it just got out of prison. But when you a non-jailbird decide that y'all should travel because she likes to do that, then all of a sudden you got to cover everything. All of a sudden you must pay for everything. And it is a very difficult thing to tell a black woman that if you pay the bills, then you call the shots. If you paid the cost, you are the boss. It is a difficult thing to tell even to women from the continent. Now, my wife has said, no, you are the boss. There's still times I have to remind her. And I'm one of the lucky men. I've got a good wife. But some of you brothers, man, y'all got it bad. And a lot of you were stuck there in the States. And unfortunately, you were going to take some shots at women that did nothing. I can sit up and say to BMT, hey, man, look, we're going to have to admit that title was clickbait, bro. But there are going to be times when some of you who do decide to get into the mix and get into these fights, you're going to fire shots. Unless you are very careful, you are going to fire shots at some who have done nothing to you. Because you won't know they didn't do it. And that is why it is that I might under attack people at times when I attacked. Well, when I insulted Courtney Michelle, it was an under attack. All I said is you're still a hyena. But I did that because all I, I wanted to make sure that I did not say anything that was not true. I wanted to make sure of that. Why did I call it one? She was defending them. She was speaking from their standpoint. 
I forgot what she had said about, yes, y'all men should be SYCBM and save the community. And yeah, you, you, uh, you brothers should be out here mentoring these kids that, that other men done sired that you could have never sired because we would have never screwed you anyway. But you should mentor those kids. I forgot she said that. That's some hyena uh, babble right there. And not only that, but then she turns around and starts talking about doing a reset on incels. Incels? If they're involuntarily celibate, it's involuntary. What should be done to punish them for that? And with, if that's so bad, then why do you raise sons to be either bed bucks or incels and nothing in between? You're sitting up here trying to turn bed bucks into husbands. But you don't raise them for that. And one of the commentators on my channel explained uh, under, under that video, actually explained to me that his mother his mother was sending out mixed messages all the time while he grew up with his dad. Giving him and his brothers mixed messages. And he said that later on when they got to be in their 30s and they were single and childless, first she was saying, well, what's wrong with these women of this generation? Something's wrong with them. She talked about them. And then when he and his brothers got into their 30s, single and childless, she started to ask what's wrong with these men. That's because, see, at this point, at this point, she wanted to shift their attention to themselves so that they wouldn't look at her and see what might be missing in her. What did she do wrong? She didn't want to be examined by her own sons. I have to admit, I was fortunate because once my mom began to start self-introspection, she knew that trying to hide stuff from me was dangerous because I'd see it anyway. And she was forthcoming and honest with what she could articulate in English. But not every man has that, especially a lot of black men with black moms. Their moms will hide everything from you. They don't want you to know. I mean, they want you to figure women out and don't be no fool, but then they still don't want you to know about her herself. So, you know, know these games as long as there's some other woman playing them. But if I played him on your dad or on your stepdad or on just, you know, my boyfriend, don't say nothing about it. No, shuck that fit. <sighs> No, shuck that fit. No, mom, you know that man ain't even your type. If you didn't have me, you wouldn't have given him a shot. And he ain't even got no kids. Why, ma? Why wouldn't you have considered him if you didn't have me and my brothers and sisters? Because that ain't your type. Because you believe that some should do the feeding and others should do the breeding and those two should never be the same guy. So in light of this, because this exists, unfortunately, a lot of you brothers, man, if you decide to be super militant, you are going to fire shots at women that didn't do anything. And you're simply going to have to be willing to fess up later on and say, OK, I was wrong about you. My bad, because if you didn't do it, then that, that bullet shouldn't have been for you. You have to be ready to fess up later on and admit you didn't know you shot the wrong one. I don't mean literally shooting, but things like insults and blame. You got to be prepared for it. The other option is that you can be, you can be not militant enough per se, like I choose to be. You can be the guy, kind of guy that AC, accountability commentary, doesn't trust that much. You can try to be one of those dudes. I'm willing to be that, but not a lot of you are. But there's not going to be a perfect way to tell who did what. Those Deltas in Columbia didn't do anything per se. People that witnessed them said they had normal attitudes. They were just doing their normal thing as, as Deltas, strutting their stuff. And then that's fine. It does seem normal. 
That is, if they didn't have an attitude, they didn't have one. But by the same token, I do also understand that if they decide to get involved with someone there, that is when it's going to come out. I've long stated that we even Western sisters can make great friends if that's what you're looking for. I've stated that for a while. Oh, yeah. If y'all really are friends and buddy, buddy, they great. Try to get involved with them. Nope. Mm -mm. You're going to suffer. And it'll never stop either. Never will. And so with that being said, um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, close this out because uh, we're already getting into 20 minutes. It's not much you can do to avoid that. Except to risk being not militant enough. And that's going to mean that some men are going to come along and say, you should have been this, you should have done this, that, and the other. You should have fired that shot. You should have, look, they, there'll be times when they'll say that and they were right, but there'll be times they'll say that and they were wrong. And if you, well, in a war, you have to really pretty much be too much or too little. You're just going to have to determine which one you can live with. Sometimes you have to be one one day and another the next day based on what you can live with. It's going to hurt. You're still human, black man. And you're not going to like the idea of, of firing shots at someone that didn't do anything, but you don't know if they did or not. You know, you're not going to even like the idea of firing a specific shot at somebody for something that they did not do, even if they did something else. Keep this in mind, old gentlemen. You're going to have to choose which one you can live with, but you also were going to have to remember that we did not start this war. We never were going to. We're heterosexual black men. We would have never conceived of starting a gender war. And you also must remember one other thing. Not every element of this gender war started in the diaspora. Some of that started on the home continent itself independently of the Portuguese, the Dutch, the French, or the English. I hope that what I've said helps and benefits. Thank you for listening. As always, black heart, black mind, black out, assalamu alaikum and black, heterosexual, non-select male power just because they don't like it, and black, patriarchy until extinction of judgment day. Thank you for flying again with us here on Jet Black Airways with Jet Black is also a verb. Keep jetting black with us until the wings and the wheels fall off. Gender justice forever.